Welcome to Redbeard and the Den of Tools. Howdy ho, guys and gals. It's Red, your friendly neighborhood tool bear, back again here in the den. Well, okay, not exactly in the den. We're 400 feet above a local hospital. Yeah, some people were complaining. Some people, one person, was complaining about uh, my background not changing enough. So I thought I'd mix it up, go through whatever high-resolution photos I have. This is a drone job I did from a, a few months back, and it's kind of pretty, so I thought I'd throw it up there for you. Anyway, let's jump into it. That's not what we're here for. Well, I guess it kind of is. We're up in the air, and we're going to talk about air. Yeah, I know. One of the most talked about, most questions things that the bear gets is, Hey, hey bear, what's up with Harbor Freight and their air compressors? I know, I know. Now, the the, the short end of it is, they're applying their uh, their Goldilocks principle, their, their good, better, best, to the air compressors, just like they're doing with pretty much everything else these days. And, you know, in the end, that can only be a good thing for all of us. I hear a lot of people going, they're going to get rid of the cheap stuff and they're going to get all expensive. Oh, this guy is falling. It's the, no. There is no proof of that whatsoever. I've talked to people. I've talked to people at corporate. No, they're not doing that. That would be stupid. And they, they know what, you know, buttered their bread to get going with. So they're not going to give up on those customers. They're just trying to build a bigger customer base. And can you blame them? Anyway, I've been pretty happy with a lot of them. But in some cases, maybe not so much. Not usually that the tool's not good. But I think you're going to know where the, uh, the bear's going to end up talking about this. But anyway, let's get going on the, this conversation, shall we? Uh, and what we got here for the example is their A number one go to. This is the their big seller. This outsells all the rest of their air compressors combined, according to some sources I I have. And, and by sources, I'm not talking about uh, deep freight here. I, I basically I ask around at, at different uh, store managers and stuff and ask them, you know, hey, what's your best selling compressor? And they all point to this thing. They're like sells ten to one compared to everything else. And for good reason, it's a it's a reasonably priced compressor. It usually sells for just under a hundred and fifty dollars. There, you can see a little coupon there for one one forty nine. So you know that's a good price range, and it's got a decent sized tank. And the specs on it, well, to be honest, it'll run most of your average you know home shop DIY small shop you know air tools. It, it's you're not going to run a full size you know automotive shop off of one of these. But for around the, you know, the garage and whatnot, it, it, it'll do pretty much anything you ask it to. Except for be reasonably quiet, because it won't do that at all. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, we, you know, we got love-hate with this one. But, you know, it's uh, if you've been following the channel for any length of time, you know I've had uh, two of these so far. I, I bought one brand new uh, years ago. Uh, I used it, had a great time with it. I sold it when we moved, figuring I'd get one here cheap. And sure enough, I picked one up at a uh, at one of the parking lot sales for like, what was it, 75 bucks or something? Anyway, yeah, you can't count on those kind of deals, but they're nice when they come around, huh? So anyway, a few months back, maybe more than a few months, you know the bear's memory how it is. We got to see this little blue boy here come out. The McGraw, and you know, this was when they were first kind of rolling out. I guess it was probably a while, a little while ago, but this is when they were first starting to roll out, uh, you know, these new lines of tools, and we weren't sure what it was. Honestly, I had the impression that this was going to be their new line of of oil-free compressors, and we all know how the the bear thinks of most most oil-free compressors. But, you know, if you had a small shop and you didn't want to have to do maintenance on your compressor or something, and you it was going to be for very light duty, something like this would be fine. But then, you know, just recently we saw two new compressors drop. We saw the 21-gallon oil-free, the big brother of that last one, coming in at a hefty $250. Now we got a coupon on it for $220, but still, that that's, you know, it's getting up there. And we saw this, the 20-gallon oil lubed vertical compressor. Now, this is obviously the, uh, you know, the just right bear, if you will, for between the uh, the baby bear, the, the inexpensive uh, Chicago Electric, and what's going to be their new premium brand, Fortress. Now, what we got here is we got, this is, you know, the specs here are easy to see. They're 20 gallons, 135 max PSI. Uh, 4.0 SCFM at an 85 dBA. Now, I'll be honest, I have not heard this run yet. Uh, I've been trying to get a manager to plug it in for me. Let me let me listen to it. And I'm, 
I don't want to be one of those guys who buys something to take it home to, to test it for a video and return it. So I, I, I won't do that kind of stuff. I, I know there's some channels out there that do that, and I, I don't think that's kosher. There's, it's bad enough the people who, who use it like a rental service. I, I think that's pretty shady as well. You know, where they go, they buy the tool, they use it for a project for the weekend, and then they take it back. That's, that's all right. If you use it, it's yours. You own it. Anyway. The point being that, uh, you know, we pretty much just have the specs here. Now, this is, in fact, let's let's get into those those kind of comparison specs a little bit more, shall we? Well, and first of all, let's talk price. So here's the new Super Coupon that's out. And we got the Husky, uh, uh, Husky, <laughs> compared, they're, compared it to the Husky. But we got the Central Pneumatics at $159.99. Now, we know there's a better coupon than that out there right now. that takes it under $150. And then there's the McGraw at one sixty nine ninety nine, and I do believe that is the best coupon on it currently. So what we're looking at here is, and it's interesting, they're not comparing the two to each other like they have with some other stuff, but you're looking at a price gap there of about twenty dollars. Is that right? One fifty, one seventy, twenty nine. Yeah, you know the barren math, okay. And don't look at any of those two times the life, twenty five percent quieter, twenty seven percent more run down. Runtime, I guess what against the Porter cable or whatever. Anyway, don't don't go by that. Let's let's get into some of the numbers that really matter. All right, we got twenty one gallon versus twenty gallon. Okay, that that that's pretty much a draw at that point. We got a one twenty five max psi versus a one thirty five max psi. So close, it, it doesn't really matter. Now running horsepower at two point five versus one point six. I don't care what you spec the running horsepower at. I want to see what it actually does. Now let's look at the SCFM. Now this is at 90 psi. You got 4.7 with the uh, the CP there, and 4.0 with the McGraw. So you're getting a little bit less. Now are you going to notice that? Only if you're trying to really push, you know, and and run tools that you shouldn't be running on either of them. Uh, you might get a little more oomph out of the uh, the CP, the the central pneumatic, but the, Again, it's so close, it doesn't really matter. Uh, now, at 40 PSI, again, 5.8 versus 5. You get a little bit more out of the central pneumatic, but, you know, not that much more. And here's the thing. The DBA, so this is the sound level. This is decibels. And, and the central pneumatic is rated at 90, and the McGraw is rated at 85. Now, we all know with Harbor Freight advertising that everything, it's always a big fish store, you know. I, <laughs> I once caught, caught a, a tool fish. It was this big, you know, but, uh, now it's, they, 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 they do this thing and you just kind of roll your eyes and go with it. Well, I, uh, I have a, a, a sound meter that I use on my cell phone. Now I've had, I've, I've done video stuff for years and years. Uh, and, uh, we used to do some sound stuff in my professional job back when I, I, you know, was the COO for a video game company. And you know, don't hold it against me. You know, we all have, you know, dark secrets in our past. Uh, but anyway, the, the fact of the matter is I, I've, I've compared. We, we actually used to have a sound meter that we'd use for doing audio stuff. And we realized that the sound meter for most applications is within a reasonable margin of error of these ones you can download for your phone. And so we pretty much stopped using it and just started using the ones on our cell phone. So it's, I know that it's close enough. And then I also, you know, compared it against some known kind of quantity level sounds that I have around here, make sure I had a good baseline. And the central pneumatics, as I went out of my garage, ran it. And, and here's one of the other things. It's always like how far away from the item you're testing it. So I put it right up to, to the central pneumatic. Now, and I admit, I totally admit these things are stupid loud. And it measured 8.1, basically 8.2 dB. Or, sorry, 8.2. <laughs> it's whisper quiet. No, 82 decibels, which is basically uh, really loud talking street noise level. Anything above uh, 85 is considered you need to have hearing protection. Anything between 80 and 85, it's recommended, but it's not required. And... Uh, this is if you were standing right next to this thing for an extended length, like every day, a couple hours a day, or you know, several times per day. Yeah, you should probably have some hearing protection on. But I'll be honest, I thought it was going to be louder. I I was stunned when I saw that number. I 
I went back. I'm like, let me check this thing, calibrate it again. And the more I thought it, just sta- thought about it, just standing there, you know, yeah, I'm in a closed space and it echoes off the walls and stuff, but it really isn't, I guess, as loud as I remembered it being. Maybe my older one was louder. I don't know. But uh, I recommend you guys download, you know, one of the decibel meters off of your cell phone and check it for yourself. I know a lot of you guys have the central pneumatics. So if you can do that, in fact, you know what? I'll post the uh, the sound meter that I used. Uh, if you guys could download it and uh, and post down below what you got, well, then we'll get a, you know, a sample size and maybe we can figure out, hey, maybe mine's just broken or something. <laughs> Does it run as loud? But the point of the fact is, if they're, and I can't believe I'm saying this, if they're rating at 90 and it's really coming in in the low 80s, then the McGraw is probably going to be well below that 85. And you may think, well, that's not much. It's only 5 dB, maybe more, maybe a little bit less. But at that kind of sound level, the, the sound levels, the, I don't know if they, I don't think they grow exponentially, so to speak. But the way you notice them is is severe. It's not like, a difference from one to two is a difference from this to this. It, it is, it, it's significant when it starts getting above that, that pain threshold, which is around 75, 70 to 80 in that range. So if this thing really is, if the McGraw really is in that kind of range, that could be a, uh, a compressor that's quiet enough to run to your shop and have a conversation next to and, and not really worry about it. Uh, it, 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 I don't know, you know, it, the, it, the specs are a little bit less, but if the sound is less, is it, if it's enough less, it's the kind of thing that would make me switch for $20 having a, a compressor that doesn't make my ear ring ears ring. Yeah. $20 is worth that to the bear. I don't know about you. I've already done enough damage to my ears. I listened to too much rock and roll as a kid, went to too many loud concerts, uh, got into shooting sports, was a pistol instructor. Oh, every, every weekend, 2000 plus rounds. And oh, even with good hearing protection, there's just only so much you can do. So anyway, oh, sorry. Of course, they're both 120 volts. Yeah, we know that. Anyway, moving on. I know the bears uh, hemmed and hawed on, on this part enough. As I mentioned before, there, there's also Fortress. Now, when this came out, the first thing I went, I saw, or I should say, the first thing I thought of when I saw that was, hey, <laughs> <laughs> That's a California Air. Now, if you guys don't know who uh, California Air compressors or incorporate whatever they are, California Air, that's what I call them. If you don't know who they are, they make these little gray compressors just like this. And they are the, the go-to for reasonably priced whisper quiet compressors. And when I saw this, I thought, oh, look, a cheap knockoff. And then I saw the price. And I was like, whoa, not a cheap knockoff. Uh, not, I don't know if you call it a knock. Okay. It's a, it's a knockoff. Let's be honest. When you make a compressor to look just like somebody else's, you're, you're making a, a knockoff, but you know, I'll, I'll be honest. I guess I hadn't looked at a California compressor in some time because I went and looked at one of these in person and wow, the, the build quality on this, the welds, the construction, the knobs, everything about it is a step above California Air. Okay, I just want to do a quick walk around. There was one sitting here in the store. Unfortunately, this one was not running, but there you can see how the faceplate is set up. Rather than those nice ugly welds that they have on the Air, uh, California Air, they got nice bolts there. It's pretty much the same setup. You've got the uh, the two piston setup, but everything about this, the, the feet that it sits on, all the connections are very tight. They look like they're quality pieces. Uh, they look well put together. Those of you, I know there's some of you out there who have a California air compressor. Go and tell me that that faceplate there is not better, you know, better made, better knobs, better layout, more information, better dials than what you have on your California air. Because, I mean, and I'll show you here in just a second. So this thing here, this is their half horsepower. And that's what's really funny is, this model is made to look like a model that's a step up from the one that has the exact same specs. So the California Air that would be comparable to this. Now note the coupon price on this is $129.99. The California Air on that. Now this is a Walmart price, by the way. Is $108.89. 
Okay. Now, they also, Harbor Freight also makes a second one, a two gallon one, for 160. And the comparable uh, California air to that is this one. And this is the one they're knocking off. And you can see there, you can see the, the welds on that faceplate and the, the knob, the recess. It, it's, it's not bad. There's, it's, there's nothing bad about it. But if you look at this, look at, look at the grip on that. Nice big finger grooves, big robust handle. Look at the grip on this. It's just a little, you know, bicycle grip. Look at the, the, the knob, the center knob on this. It's definitely recessed below the panel. They've got a punch through sticking out. Look at the knob on this. It's raised up, big knobby thing, easy to grip, bigger gauges, easier to get to. I mean, everything. It's just it, the welds are better. Everything's better about it. Now, whether the internals and the motor is better and everything, I don't know. But I have heard both of these run in person, okay? The first time I heard a California air compressor run, uh, I I questioned the guy. I'm like, so are you going to turn it on? And he's like, it is. It's, it's running right now. And sure enough, I went over and held it. I'm like, wow, it is. And I was in a Harbor Freight the other day. And they had one of these set up up front. And I walked up. I'm like, oh, can we plug it in and, and test it and see what it sounds like? And the associate looked at me and said, sir, it is plugged in. It is running. I was like, what? And I looked out. Yeah, yeah, it was. And uh, they, yeah, they're both whisper quiet. Now, if you pay attention, it, you know, it's a loud store and stuff. I, I Are they, is this thing as quiet? I Well, I didn't have a side-by-side -side comparison. I'm sorry, you know. Shoot me for not having them both right next to me. Hey, I'm joking about that. It's not bear season. I, I, I'll call the Rangers on you. Anyway, the point is that this thing is is reasonably close. It's within a, a margin of error that nobody's going to, you know, who's not a, a air compressor sound snob is going to know the difference. And that said, the, it, the Harbor Freight, I can't believe I'm saying this, looks like it's better made. But... In the end, it doesn't have the years of reputation behind it. Just because the other one's not quite as pretty, I don't know if you can quite justify the price. We're talking, what's that, 125 versus 160 because it's a little prettier. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't, I can't go there. And this thing's got, you know, it. It's got a, a tried and true, you know, a reputation behind it. They they've made their bones building these air compressors. I, I don't know what to tell you. Now, Harbor Freight recently leaked this, where we saw that there's going to be a whole new line of these Fortress air compressors. We got a pancake compressor, we got a little rolling compressor, and we've got the big 27 gallon shop compressor. This is going to compete with that McGraw 20 gallon and the Central Pneumatics 21 gallon. Now, we don't have pricing on this. We don't have anything else, but it, it's shown right there on the front, though. It's going to have 200 PSI on it. Uh, it it looks like it's going to be a pretty, you know, cool piece of equipment. But if it's going to be more expensive, I mean, the other ones are more expensive than the California Air. And the closest thing I could find for California Air was this 20 gallon one for $427. That means this thing's probably going to be at least a, a $500 air compressor. And they're those big ones, they're not quite as quiet. Now they're they're quieter at 70 decibels. They're they're quiet enough you can stand next to it, you know, sip your coffee and have a conversation with your buddy about, you know, how the Cubs are doing today. So it's yeah, and I meant I meant that both ways. Kids kids and the team. <laughs> it's it's bear humor. Deal with it. And you know what the bear says about oil-free, but in this case, California Air has been doing this for a long time, and they make a quality oil-free compressor. They, they put the time and effort to make something that lasts a long time. It really does. And you, and you pay for that. Uh, by the way, these are uh, two-stage compressors. That's part of how they get it so quiet. Well, I don't know what exactly that means for the old Chicago pneumatic. Is it going to get relegated to the, the bottom bin? Uh, I don't know, but... I, I got to get my paws on one. If any of you have the McGraw, do download that, that app that I'm going to link down below and, and let me know uh, how it scores because I would love to hear these two run together. I, I hinted to my contact over at uh, over at uh, Harbor Freight, but I don't think they're going to send the bear another air compressor. So 
Anyway, that's all the bear has for you tonight. Don't forget to chop that like button, subscribe, ring the bell if you want to make sure you get all the latest news here from the Den of Tools. And, you know, if you feel like it, you know, support the channel. You know, share the video, share it with a friend, post on Facebook or whatnot. Uh, or even, you know, dig in the wallets there and get yourself uh, a nice little uh, Hercules, uh, sorry, Bercules Blue uh, sweatshirt or one of our t-shirts there in the merch store. Anyway, that's all we got for you tonight. Take care, everyone, and as always, shine on.